Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, a show that examines all aspects of sexuality, from physical to emotional to spiritual. Join our hosts as they discuss age-old questions, common misconceptions, and the latest topics surrounding sex. They'll tackle topics about sexuality from the complicated to the hilarious and everything in between. GSMC Sex Podcast is your show for all of your questions about sex, even some you might not have thought of yet. for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, where the topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Hello out there, all my little sex friends. I know we are, you know, getting through what is going on, and Either you're working or you're quarantined, one or the other, but sex is always on your mind, which is probably really good. <laughs> Boy, if we ever talked about baby moves, this would be it. Um, so that is, with that being said, <laughs> you know, I'm going to try something like every podcast I'm going to try and uh, start putting in a, like, sex position of the week or of the, you know, that time. And, we'll, and I'll, you know, it's a new one or a twist on an old one. So, you guys have something to look forward to. Maybe you want to try the new sex position and all of that. Maybe you know it and you want to put your own little twist onto it. However... We will stick that in somewhere in the middle. I'm not going to tell you where. So, you got to listen. So, I'm going to put it in a different spot every show. And with that being said, let's move along. Have you ever had the fear of missing out on sex? You know, you get married, then all of a sudden you get married, and some cute little thing walks by you. Or some fine little mama or fine man walks by you. And then all of a sudden you imagine going up to this person or having casual sex with them. Well, then you stop back and say, what the heck did you get married for? If you're having these thoughts. Let me fill you in. Those thoughts are actually normal. It's when you act on them that's the issue. I mean, uh, it just... It's human nature. However, nowadays, it's actually called FOMOSEXUAL. F-O-M-O sexual. You know, um, and basically, it's when you are, you know, you're constantly wondering what other people do in a sex, or you feel that you have uh, missing out on sex you could have had or didn't have before you got married. You know, you got married for a reason. Apparently you found what you wanted in aspects that you wanted it. You know, you can't exactly... You're always going to regret something. Or even then... Feel as though, not so much regret, but feel as though you are missing something. Until you come to a point in your life where you feel, you know, hey, you know something? I'm very content. I'm very good at where I'm at. 
uh, don't need to look anywhere else. You know, I married who I wanted. And there you go. And with that, you don't need to worry. But, you know, if you're having problems in your your sexual portion of your marriage or relationship, more of a marriage, because most people will get married, then all of a sudden when they get married, they feel, uh-oh, what I do this for? That's why, you know, you generally don't get married extremely young. I mean, can't tell you anything else except for the the obvious there and knowing what you want when you did it. See, women generally know before men know what they want. But women do feel FOMO. So, it's not something that you don't feel. It's just it happens. And what you're doing is you're thinking of either sex that you missed out on or something that you didn't try before you got married. What does it say you can't try that with your partner, your uh, your husband or wife? You know, who says that you can't do that? And generally, when they define homosexual, it's generally someone who is promiscuous due to a fear of missing out on sexual activities. Uh, it's really wondering, you know, and saying, what would have happened? Or, man, if I wasn't married, I could be doing this. Who says that you can't do that with your partner? If it's something new, try it out. That's what they're there for. You know, this fear of missing out in, you know, terms of hooking up with that little person, you know, that little attraction that you just had. Most FOMO is based on, like, the love. I mean, the love. Woof, boy, I was off on that one. The lust, that attraction that you just seen somebody walking by. Um, you know, and when it's in terms of hooking up with somebody it's like hooking up for the fear that the opportunity will never present itself again you know it's not that way i think i think relationships are a lot more open nowadays than anything uh but marriage is marriage and you got to embrace it and that fear of missing out on sex, you know, that it, it can stand in the way. It can stand in the way and it, it won't stand in the way. There's two ways of looking at it. One is you are human. You can look, you just can't touch. How does someone look at your, you know, partner in the alluring way and wondering what sex was like with them? You are actually having that sex with them. So you don't have to uh, worry about that. You know, because you can say, oh, you can look. But see, I'm going to go home to it. And me and her are going to get down and dirty in the sack. You know, this, when you're looking at it from a perspective of if you're not married, and you're, you know, you're young, you're trying to get all this out of your system and everything. Not exactly getting it out of your system, more like, oh, you're just doing everything and anything. Uh, so it goes that way. But it's more of if, if you're young, you're trying, you know, you're trying to live, you know, live, live life to the fullest before you get older. A lot of people look at it that way. You never miss a party. Uh, and you go to these parties in the event, you know, in the hopes that there'll be this massive hookup and getting that out. Some people are actually, believe it or not, uh, their goal in life is to go to bed 
with an individual of every culture. So that they can say they had them. And then on top of that, it would be a fulfillment so that whenever they got married, they would never wonder what it would be like to be with that person. It's the mind is really, it's got a mind of its own. <laughs> and then being individual, um, that adds to it, you know. Being homosexual is not a bad thing. It is a thought process that everybody goes through. Uh, I mean, there are, I mean, there's even one being homosexual, and this explanation is like, hey, it's out there. And I wouldn't put it past the person who actually thinks like this. Um, a person who is sexually attractive to a certain female with the last name rhyming with Toman. Now, but then you spell it with an F and more like the beginning of the of homosexual. Now, being homosexual has been something that is become more noticeable or more um, on the rise because now we have Tinder, we have Plenty of Fish, we have Match, all these online dating sites. Just basically putting out a smorgasbord menu of men and women who are out there looking for sex or looking for a relationship. And here you are, you know, thinking... You know something? I, I, I got this person, you know, I'm married or I'm with this person, I'm getting ready to, you know, be married or whatever. And that pressure comes in to get as much sexual experience as possible before you really are settling down into this life that is forever in everybody's mind. Yes. You did betroth yourself to someone. Does that mean you are not human? Like I said, you can look, don't touch. Be flattered that somebody is looking at you in that manner. Or, you know, someone's looking at your mate in that manner. Or you're looking at that person in that manner. If, you know, everybody would tell you if they're in a, a relationship, you know, this is the person. I love, I'm going to be with this person to the end of the world. It has, they have everything that I want. But then you sit back and you're thinking, what if I had sex with Jim, Jim Joe, who makes something up before getting married? You know, it's, everybody gets in that little bit of a, they want to be, reassured that they are still sexy or that they are still sexually attractive. So then you start thinking about, well, what, you know, here comes FOMO. I'm like the fear of missing out on some sexual experience because you're married or because you're with somebody and you're in a long-term relationship. It, you know, you say that you've never had that thought. For the most part, everybody's had that thought. Like I said, you're human. You can look at as many individuals that you want. You can imagine as much as you want. But you could also use that as your own sexual arousal. Uh, you know, keep the, yeah, have a conversation with your, your partner. Like, just put it out there. Have you ever thought what you were missing out on something? See what their response was sexually. You know, you gotta be specific though. <laughs> so when you're talking to them, you know, like, have you ever felt FOMO? And if they say, well, what's FOMO? 
fear that you're missing out on some sexual or folk home, say formal sexual. And then explain it. In fear of missing out on some sort of sexual encounter with somebody. You know, and that could be something that you two can talk about and even use as a way to uh, enhance your sexual, your sexual, um, your sex in the bed, your sexual or all that. You can, you know, if you fear that you wanted to go to bed with a blonde because you want to know if it was different over a brunette. Yeah, it could be the stupidest things whatsoever. So get a blonde wig for, you know, your mate and come in with a blonde wig. Use it in role playing. You know? Granted, you'll probably turn around and say, well, that's not the same. Well, if they're giving you everything you want and they just put, you know, they surprise you with a blonde wig, well, they go out and get their hair bleach, which I doubt would be. Not worth it for you to do, especially since he married you as a brunette or a redhead or whatever other color. Getting that wig would just be that step. You can change names. You can come to the house like, you know, surprise and act like you're somebody else and whatever. But putting that in and talking that over, you know, it's no longer actually FOMO. It's actually now called FOMA. Why they did that, I don't know, because they don't exactly explain what that one means, but they still tell you that uh, FOMO, it's the same. It's just a fear of missing out. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they call it uh, a brand new neuroses coined for the generation who can't spend a Saturday night at home without seeing a thousand pictures on Instagrams of parties they aren't attending. Because generally at parties, what do you do? You pick somebody up. And then go home and have bad casual sex. On that note, we are going to take a break here, the first break in the show. When we come back, we will continue with FOMA. And depending how far we get with FOMA, kind of move into a therapy, a sexual therapy you can use um, that enhances your sex life. I'm not going to give names right now, but we get to it. You will know. It's All right, it's Sensata. Sensata Focus. And obviously Sensata, which is a sensate, actually, focus, sensations, and you're focusing. So we'll talk a little about that if we get that. But for right now, when we come back, we will continue with Foam Sexual. So get that snack, get that drink, come back, get relaxed, and I'll meet you back here for more Sex Talk with Andra. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships, well, Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast, your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, where the topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Welcome back to the second segment of the show where we're talking about FOMA and FOMA sexual. We're talking about fear of missing out on sex or what you could do sexually, uh, 
before you kind of sort of settle down. Now, we all have that thought process. But what if, you know, I wasn't married, I could have sex with that person. If I wasn't married, I could have sex with that person. Or, you know, you won't feel so guilty or anything. You are a human being, remember that. Yes, there is a ring on your finger, but you also have to maintain in some level of individuality in being who you are because that person married you for who you are, not something that you are not. So remember that. And believe it or not, the sufferers, as they call them, of homosexual tend to be actually women in their 20s and 30s. Uh, they're usually afraid of settling down without an, you know, an adequate number of wild, crazy sexual experiences, like you know, notches in their belt. In this, you need to realize women uh, bred to basically marry young, serve their husband, and constantly, you know, having babies. This is not the Stone Age anymore. This is not the olden times. This is new times. And it is a time of a lot of sexuality and coming to the forefront and things you never even heard of. But this is how, you know, the whole thing is, is the women feel or the person, it doesn't really matter nowadays, uh, you know, when they found that person that they're going to marry, that is the person they want to be with, and then it's just that one day they wake up, you know, and realize that their sex life is not satisfying them. So that's where the problem comes in. When you find or realize that your the sex in the bedroom just is not doing it for you, it has nothing to do with, you know, the fear of missing out or finding out and needing to go out and have sex. It's where you finally need to sit down and talk with your partner and realize that what could be what's happening outside of the bedroom could be happening in your bed but being honest and open and having good communication to bring this forward and letting them know this that you want to try something that you want to do this you want to do that you know they might be getting to that point too where they feel that way but in the event that you do have someone who turns around and says, no, I like it the way it is, it's going to stay the way it is, well, then you really need to reevaluate your relationship as a whole. Because you're not going to get satisfied if they're not willing to bend. And if you can't maintain a good level of communication and trying new things, well, your sexual bed's going to be a bit of sexually lonely and we don't want that now do we so now there are symptoms of FOMO, of FOMO and they usually include like stabs of irritational joy when your ex likes your cute photo like that you've posted somewhere sweaty palms tinder envy Irritability and shortness of temper when your partner jokes that Netflix Netflix binge watching is the new foreplay. Remember that. Um, it can be fatal to a relationship. Obviously, uh, you need to realize these things. You need to know that. You gotta be sure. Is this what I really want, or is this just something that I'm going through? You know, uh, I'm assured that a lot of people out there 
and you know who you are that have felt this never putting a name to it but knowing the feeling and can explain it in this manner but are actually out there doing something and you are you don't want to get caught because you're with that person you want to be with really doing it the wrong way and going about it the wrong way you need to really find out you know and sit down with your partner if it's something you saw or like i said some you want to have sex with a you know a different nationality or something have your partner you know do some role play there there's so much stuff out there that you can do uh obviously when you're in a relationship it feels a little like losing you're losing all you know all of that or all of those potential lives and those selves of you where those different sexual partners can come in um this this is possible you know what i mean and i think because the fact that it was found more in women than in men is because men were you know uh bred at a young age to basically in a sense quasi womanize and just be with women and having sex and you have it early and it makes you a man and all this stuff like that whereas a woman like i said is to stay home and uh learn to cook care for a house tend to the kids you know to be that perfect woman in that you know your new partner's life uh really if you get attached uh it to a long-term partnership too early does this really mean that you're losing out on loads of good sex eh, depends on how you're looking at it in some instances if you are centered on that uh yeah you're kind of making it your whole thought process when it comes to sex so yes it is hindering it if that's not it and you're just going through this little bit of whatever well then no a lot of women nowadays are getting married later because of this they want to make sure that you know the sex they're getting is the sex they want um and having that f- sexual freedom in the bedroom uh and it really you know allowing them allowing a woman to be who she wants to be in the bedroom without the pressure of knowing that you like uh the truth to someone and or oh, you're getting married and you've have a long engagement of 2 years or something uh this is where it's all coming from a lot of women are less inhibited now uh and they as women are out there having a wider range of sexual experiences and you don't feel judged anymore back in the day if you were allowing yourself out there just trying all those extra sexual experiences that you want to try like a man did you were called some pretty tough names and you were basically uh not favored in a good light in that your behavior was bad uh i mean it's really funny how they it's always been actually put out there and labeled if you why settle for a pre-mixed meal if there's a whole buffet there to choose from this is you know with foma and foma sexual however way you want to say it it's not a problem to guys you know most guys if they with somebody they end up getting like that little slight crush or attracted to somebody else or start thinking about them and what it would be like to sleep with that person uh if you're with that person if that man's with that 
their partner right then and there and they're having those thoughts too is looking at that people and I don't know how well to stress this uh, is one your relationship is not gonna go any further Unless, of course, she knows that you're looking and whatever. Turn it around, or he knows that you're looking. Turn it around on him. Your partners need to turn it around on them and say, Oh, you're thinking about having sex with that waitress over there or that with that whoever you see on the street. And if they turn around and say, Well, yeah, well, then dress up in a waitress outfit and actually act out the role completely before actually just going to bed because you it's the dress part right there it's not a part where uh, say you've got you've even worked at a waitress and like early on in your years and your partner didn't know that you know get a waitress outfit and make dinner that that time at dinner time play it out you're the waitress you're waiting on them set it up like a little uh diner or something and then see if that works uh if the person had blonde hair get that wig like i said if they had uh, a certain particular look try to replicate that look because now your partner is now the guy the male is now looking at you it's say oh my god she, you know she looks exactly like that person or your partner looks exactly like that person, that waitress that you were thinking of. Play it out. Then stay in roll. Don't come out of it until it's all done. And then even leave if you're going to. You know? Or you can have them meet somewhere or where we, you know, ask the place if you could uh, just be a waitress for a day. I don't know. Try and figure that out. What works uh, for you the best? Why are is why are women going through this, or why are individuals in general going through FOMA? Well, there's a new generation out there, new generation of women, new generation of men. Uh, but more on the women part of it, where they are really thinking about, you know, I should really be living up my sexuality and not settling until I feel comfortable that I've done what I wanted to do sexually per se and you're able to actually take all what you've learned and put that into that relationship somewhere down the line having that sexual f uh, freedom not to feel pressured or not feeling that you have something over uh your head you know there's got to be some balance there between sex and love in your life and especially as a woman remember men were able to do this and it was viewed as them being manly women doing it was not viewed favorably nowadays whole new different time whole new different sexual healing out there as Marvin Gaye will say or would have said you know gotta get that sexual healing on and, and get that feeling out and find out about it and try it out you may not like it but the whole idea is that you went out and you tried it you got that sexual feeling out that sexual urge to do something so uh, generally in your 20s you're spending a lot of time trying to figure out who you are both individually and sexually I think that when puberty hits and you're going through teenage years where you're actually trying to figure out oh my god you're too old to do this too young to do this and just trying to figure out where you sit in this world and now you're in your 20s and you're trying to figure out where you are sexually <laughs> so it's all over the place um that note we will take a break but when i come back we will continue with this 
and uh, discussing fomosexual and all that good stuff. So, replenish that drink, replenish that snack, come back, put your hands back where they were, and I'll meet you back here for more sex talk with Andra after the break. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra. We have a topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Welcome back, where we are discussing sexual, the fear of missing out on, you know, any sexual experience. Before you settle down or if you're in a long term relationship like you felt you are missing out on some sexual experience. And as promised, I'm going to give you a sexual position. And this one's called the Venus Butterfly. And for those of you who do not know about it, well, listen up. For those of you who do, maybe put your own spin on it. Completely up to you if you haven't already done so. <laughs> Now, the Venus Butterfly, it's a name of a highly orgasmic sex move. Um, And it gives you an unprecedented degree of pleasure uh, to your female mate. Now, uh, it is a a technique that combines clitoral stimulation through cunnilingus, and penetration by a sex toy. All your partner's thing is one or the other, whichever they feel the need uh, to use. Now, this can be done in multiple positions. Okay. The receiver can be laying down, standing up, in a chair, lying flat in the bed, uh, however way you want to do it. There you go. So, here are some of basics now how effectively how effect how to effect effectively perform it um have a little tongue tied here wow uh and we are off how's that sound the venus butterfly for starters is very versatile which you know you could do it in a different way there is no um a right no right or wrong way to do this position as long as the receiver is enjoying themselves, you know that. Uh there are various uh variations involving tongues, fingers, and sex toys. You can decide on what you want to use before you start. So for number one your partner can lick your clitoris with their tongue and simultaneously finger you at the same time. Step 
two, your partner can lick your clitoris with their tongue and simultaneously use a vibrator inside of you. The third is your partner can use a vibrator on your clitoris and simultaneously finger you. Four, your partner can use a vibrator on your clitoris and simultaneously lick all around your vulva and vaginal openings. So these are a lot of ways you can do this. A lot of multitasking in there. Being able to rub your tummy and pat your head at the same time. Uh, a lot of skill and practice goes into this particular uh, position, but I'm sure there are a lot of you out there where all sex is not a problem for you. But uh, the orgasm is off the charts, especially for uh, the female, because you are not only stimulating the clitoris, you are stimulating everything else around it, be it with your tongue, finger, vibrator, your choice. Try something new. Use a clamp. Uh, they do have a clitoris clamp, so they're out there. If you can handle it completely, completely. Now, the next, another way, you know, you let your partner lay down on the bed. You put their head on pillows so they feel comfortable. They're going to be comfortable when you're doing this. Also, they'll be able to watch you. Can't see everything, but they know your head's doing something down there. <laughs> And you're and they're filling your mouth. So, you know, you kind of slowly stop by licking, you know, the clitoris, the labia, even inside of the vagina, you know. And if you have a long tongue, oh, well, there you go. You're all set. <laughs> partner has no problem there. Get your partner wicked, wet and ready. You know, and your focus is on that clitoris. Then you start going in slowly and then sliding those fingers or that vibrator or what new thing that you can try with your fingers or with something you can find. But this is, uh, you know, the lovely Venus butterfly. Now, remember here some tips with doing the Venus butterfly. Be sure that your partner pulls back your clitoral hood. And this is as they caress your clitoris with their tongue. This way they have it completely open and their focus is right there. They can't, you know, they don't have to go around swimming and looking for it and trying to find out where the heck it really is. And this, by this, and separating it out, really, because you're now focused right there, it, the clitoral uh, orgasm is so heightened. Uh, now, another way is use your left thumb to pull the mounds of pubis up so that the clitoris can fully be uncovered, just like in the first. Then you slowly start licking and sucking on the clitoris. Hey, they want you to give them a blowjob, have them give you one. Yeah, get all this. Um, if they grab your hair at that point, well, this could mean that you're actually doing very well. And please don't stop. They want more. So, make sure that your hand and fingers are in a com comfortable position to allow you to partake in this position for longer periods of time. Um, not being in a very good, bad or awkward position with your hand, you're going to get tired fast and the results aren't going to be as satisfying as you want them to be, uh, for your partner. And you might just have to stop because you're probably putting a bitter taste in their mouth about the whole thing altogether. Now, there are little finger vibrators, so... Obviously, you could use a sex toy all by itself, but if you could put one on your finger and use your finger and the vibrator at the same time, hey, you're getting a two-for-one deal. So, uh, obviously, it gives you that feeling of extreme um, 
intercourse, although they were a little bit more flavorful on the uh, wording. We can say that on the air. Uh, obviously, this focus is, you know, women don't exactly have orgasms with penetration alone. With that dual stimulation and, uh, and penetration and all of that uh, really gets them to get to that peak orgasm and really working on it and really getting intense. So there are a lot of things that go on. So remember that. Uh, and that is your position for the show, or the, this segment, this session in my show. And now back on to FOMOSEXUAL. Now we were talking about how this is more for women than men, and women feel it more, and it has a lot to do with how women were bred and raised. Same thing with men, you know, times are different now. Women are more out there to be able to express themselves sexually. Now, and nowadays, I don't even think they use the word slut anymore. But, you know, sometimes it's more attractive to a man. You know, and this is, you know, a lot of women who are coming out of this, you know, cover of that word or being not viewed in a very respectable way. And coming out uh, in this new generation are going uh, with the same sex because woman understands a woman and you know all you men are sitting back here and saying oh you know what a waste I, you know you know what i can do to you she can't do that to you hey that's not how they're feeling it you know it's more of an understanding than anything and with that understanding it builds that intimacy that bond that love between two people you know, they might just be seeking out that same sex just for a moment because that is some part of their homosexual uh, thinking and wanting to find out. And, you know, it's more women than men. Women are a lot easier to, and even with men, a lot easier to envision a woman than a woman. Nowadays, a man on a man is not you know, a new thing, but you still, in the world of heterosexual, it is more looked at that way. So it's not, it has nothing to do with what sexuality you are. It's more of uh, what makes you happy and how you go about it. And not caring that, uh, what that person thinks, really. I mean, you can go to your mate and say, hey, look, you know, it's just talking about sex. And generally, when you're with someone new, they want to know everything sexual that you've ever been through or what you've tried and all the stuff. With us as women, uh, we're probably not going to ask because produce, you know, pretty much men have done it. You know, but men usually will ask the woman because they want to know. Women will ask men about their sexual plights just to find out, uh, one, if you're going to walk into that person on the street. Uh, two, if it's a female that he's very close friends with and you know they've had sex with it, <clears throat> kind of sort of understanding that relationship is where that will come in. But, you know, Knowing how experienced they are is what you're looking for. So it's kind of sort of, it, it eases that, oh, I already know this. I know everything about them. How come you let them do this? I want to try that. It's kind of, it's a, a vicious game, a stupid game. Uh, and it's really, in a sense, kind of sort of childish. But yet, all of that wrapped together makes it that much more fun in knowing and doing so i know it you know you can bring it down there and call it whatever you want when it comes to the realism of it that sex it, it not for nothing when sitting there and you're talking to your partner about their sexual plights um and that fomo 
uh, get you turned on. So, we know that, uh, this is the person that you want to be with for the rest of your life, or that person you want to settle with, or you're going to be in that long-term relationship. Heaven only knows it might be something you're taking slow, but still, it is that relationship, and how you live that relationship is really important. Um, so, just knowing those things uh, is really nice, and believe it or not, it might be something that your partner has done that you've thought of but never tried in knowing that well they tried it and they liked it it could be a possibility and talk about it that's how you open it up that bedroom is your bedroom do what you want with it you know uh i mean i think a lot of us believe our parents never had sex but how the heck did we get here <laughs> so and it was because they're our parents, but they bred us the way they did. And that's go for male and female. So, obviously, you're going to live and do your life different. Uh, a lot of people who have a helping hand in that are your friends and your social circle. And they are the enablers of your FOMO sexual you know, especially since if you are not married yet, they're going to bring it out. So they are your enablers. It's how strong you are and what you want to do and who you want to do it with. And there is no to-do list in there. Uh, so don't have this sexual bucket list. If you can't fulfill it with the individual you're going to be with, if that's how you're looking at it and you're getting ready to get married. So... That's one way of looking at it. You need to do some serious, let's sit back and check it out. On that note, we're going to take the last break in the show. Completely up to you if you want to get another snack or a drink. If you're in the middle with your hands down your pants and have a little solo play there, continue with it. As long as you are comfortable, I will meet you back here for more Sex Talk with Andre after the break. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSNC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSNC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, where the topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Hello, and welcome back to the final segment in the show for today, where our topic is FOMO, or FOMA, or FOMOsexual, the fear of missing out on that sexual experience when when you are getting ready to settle down or you're looking to settle down did you have all that sex that you wanted did you it's almost living that you haven't did what you wanted to your whole life and there's where bucket lists come in you know mainly it's women they found that have this feeling because of the way we were bred. Women were bred to take care of the house, take care of the children, take care of the partner. 
And now with the internet out there and dating apps and this new generation out there, you know, women are now saying, whoa, 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 let me back this up. You know, I live, I was bred this way, but that's not how it's going. You know, things are different now. So what do you do? If you have it, if you have chronic FOMO, which is unlike regular FOMO, by the way, uh, which actually makes you feel bad about your life in general, FOMO spurs you into actually taking action into that thought process. And really, all of a sudden, realizing... Uh oh, what did I do? I mean, it was good for you. Absolutely. But then you thought about it, you know, and hurting that person. You need to be the bigger person at this point in time and finally say, you know, hey, not working. Or, you know, something before you even go out to have that, or have that, you know, FOMA. Where you're actually going to take that, you know, spur of taking action and speak to your partner. They might want to do it. So you may not have to go beyond the bedroom, per se. There's nothing wrong with putting off getting into that relationship. Because if you go into it where you have these feelings, you're not exactly going to put... A lot of stock in that relationship if it doesn't fill you that way um, you know nor does suffering from this occasional pain of FOMA does it mean that you are necessarily unhappy in your present relationship it doesn't uh, again it is human to feel this way it's not A bad thing is just knowing how to address it if you are already in that relationship because it will put a damper on your sex in your bedroom and goings on. Uh, You're you're human. You're going to get a little crush on somebody, even with your when you're with somebody. Uh, It's natural, like I've been saying. But don't go out there and take that little bit of being natural and turn it into blown out over the hill, you know, over the top need to get. Because I'm sure if you sat back and thought about it, the person that you're with, you really care for, and you you won't be with them for that length of time if you didn't. So there is uh, the difference with that one. You might want to bring it up. And tell, you know, your partner or ask your partner. Your partner probably will come right out and ask you anyway. Have you ever done this? You want to try this? You know? And that's how your relationship should be. Very open between the two of you. And uh, it makes you have a happy relationship. Remember, there's the sex relationship. And then there's the relationship outside the bedroom that could be going amazing but just you know get behind those closed doors yeah it's something to miss in so you really need to sit down and uh figure out what you want to have how you want to you know feel uh and being adventurous with who you're with this is where you are going to get pushed out of that or pushed whereas you're going to get that little notch that's going to you know spruce up your your bedroom a lot more because this is what it's all about you learning new things doing new things not being afraid to do that uh and moving along in your relationship to where you want it to be for you sexually and for your partner, both of you need to enjoy it. 
Um, so, knowing all of this, we are not back in the olden days anymore. Uh, do take what your mama taught you and be that person for that uh, individual you want to have that, or, uh, you know, settle, you know, I hate using the word settle, the person that you want to be in a relationship for the rest of your life, or at least for as long as you are alive, give or take a few, uh, you know, it is where you want to be, it is what you want to do, so think about it, see how, you know, talk to them first, because if you're in a relationship, you're loving them, and you're doing, you know, you don't see yourself without this person, but you're feeling FOMA sexual, or FOMO sexual, uh, sit down and talk with them and say, you know, I'm, I want to try this. Are you up for it? And most likely, and more times than none, you will get that in, individual to say, yes, absolutely. I was going to ask you and all that good thing. Uh, and then, you know, <laughs> you go from there. <laughs> but you need to give your partner the benefit of the doubt first before you um, do that. So that, you see if it's what, you know, that sex, oh, that experience, that sexual experience that you feel that you are having this homosexual over is really what you wanted to do. I mean, I know sometimes you got to stop and you got to think, oh, geez, you're probably thinking, well, this is what the person I'm with. I know I love them. I know I want to be with them. But what if it was with, like, how would it be with somebody else? Is If this is where you're going with this and your brain is stuck with this and you can't get this sexual experience of how trying and that form of sexual out of your mind, even after you talk with them and even after you've tried it with them, then you really need to sit back and say, how are you going to work? Obviously, like I said, there's the sex relationship. And then there's the relationship overall. You are into relationships when you are with somebody. We don't seem to think of it that way. But it is. You know, it is that way. As weird as it is. It's almost like it's made its own little... Sex has made its own little spot on, you know, spot in the house. Or it's just, you know, you're putting it in the box for right now because I have to go out to work or I got to go do this or whatever the case may be. And then you take it out and play with it. It's its own little toy. So this is where you stop and say, what is it that I want? What is it? You know, do I really want to go out there and actually take action on that thought process or do I want to stop and say you know something this is who I really want to be with let's try it on them first and go from there you're not living in a um what, what are my terms you're not living in the old ages anymore those names really aren't being used anymore which was you know believe it or not if a girl was very promiscuous and was called a slut or easy or anything like that when it came to sex because they were, you know, it, they were exploring their sexualness and wanting to find out the sexual experiences just like a man would. Nowadays, it's not like that anymore. Whereas now, believe it or not, if you are that way, it now is actually labeled a mental health issue. Uh, not all of them are mental health issues. They are not always a problem that needs to be treated with medication or therapy. Therapy can be in the home between you 
and that person you're married to or with that person you're with who doesn't live in your household but you've been with them and you have a relationship for a very long period of time and sprucing up in the bedroom is something different you know you want to try this uh so this is where uh you want to have this and do this and move it move your relationship up a notch there are so many things out there and we've discussed them on here with regards to uh games you can play or for sexual things that you you know make a game of that sexual that phone law sexual what do you feel that you are missing out on sec when a sexual experience write them down on paper put them into that both of you don't talk to each other first just say okay this is what we're going to do then put it you know you have your own hat they have their own hat or even put them all together and you pick one out you know pick them randomly and pick them out you know you'll be surprised at what is going to transpire out of that because uh you never know until you ask or you try that you know there is no stupid question there especially when it comes to that sexual bond with you and your partner hey what you do in the bedroom is in the bedroom like they say what you know happens in vegas stays in vegas what happens in your bedroom stays in your bedroom unless you want to use a sitting there talking about it and saying oh my god he did this to me the other night or she did this to me the other night and oh i didn't even know that i could feel that you know there are things that you are not getting out there are ways to do this <laughs> and especially if you are to the point where you are having this foma or fomo actually fomo is less but either or you are thinking it in fomo whether you act on it or not it might have just been a passing thought process and you never really have it again however it could go to the opposite end of that and it could be it could have triggered that sexual uh exploitation and wanting to know so that part is if you're with somebody you yeah, might want to sit down and talk with them regarding that uh also i mean you've got to have little crushes here and even if you're with somebody or without somebody it doesn't make a difference it's we're human uh so think about it that way and don't ever forget that uh and if it becomes overpowering well then you need to really re evaluate your uh, relationship so that uh you know see if this is really what you wanted and especially since if, if you are not married yet and the the overall goal with you is to be married or whatever and you want to be with you know, with that person for the rest of your life so remember it that way now with that being said remember to try out your lovely venus butterfly on your partner because we are at to the end of the show for today and as always please practice safe sex if not for yourself for your partner and vice versa please if you can try anything new especially with the subject that we were talking about today FOMO sexual please educate communicate and consent but you might not have to go too far from your own household to fulfill it and as always I thank you for tuning in to the GSMC sex podcast which is brought to you by the GSMC podcast network I ask that you click subscribe and please leave five stars it not only helps me but it helps the gsmc podcast network for or so because they know they need to know what you want to hear you know it giving you what you want 
Also, please seek us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram because we are on there. Click on that little heart dun, 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 with all the love or that little thumbs up. And please leave a comment. Let us know what you'd like to hear on the show. Uh, this is for your benefit as well as those around you. So, again, thank you very much for tuning in today. And have an awesome sexual experience, whatever the time of day is. Bye-bye. Until next time. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, part of the GSNC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsncpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. From sex and relationships to health and wellness, life and happiness, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast. 